In this video, we look at Venn diagrams, which is part of the AI course under topic four, statistics and probability, under the subtopic of probability. Now, under the subtopic of probability, you'll encounter two types of questions in the AI SL course. They are Venn diagrams and tree diagrams. And then in the AI HL course, you'll also encounter some other types of questions like transition matrices and Markov chains. Now, Venn diagrams are very useful to visualize information. So often you'll be given information in text form. Uh, but if you, if you translate that onto a Venn diagram, that's very useful to then determine relationships of information and therefore calculate probabilities. Now, you'll be encountering two set Venn diagrams, which is this first diagram here. So in this case here, we have set A, this left-hand circle, and set B, the right-hand circle. And the intersection is where they overlap, and we call that the intersection of set A and set B. And that is this symbol here, this N symbol, which we call intersection or, or AND. So this middle section here is A and B. But you'll also encounter three set Venn diagrams, which you can see here, so we have set A, set B and set C, and then we have intersections of them. So this middle intersection here is A and B and C. Okay, let's go through an example here and through creating a Venn diagram, you'll realize why it's quite useful and then we'll answer some probability questions after creating the Venn diagram. So in this example here, 20 people were surveyed asking if they enjoyed watching comedy and drama movies. And these were the results. So they ticked them on a piece of paper, 11 ticked comedy, 13 ticked drama, and eight ticked both. Okay, so we're gonna set up a two set Venn diagram here to represent those who like comedy and those who, look dra who like drama. Okay, so let's create one of those. Just do it nice and rough. We have two sets. The reason that we choose circles for Venn diagrams is just simply because it's easy to show the overlap. If we chose other shapes like a rectangle or a square, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So we tend to use circles. So this set here, I'm going to title, uh, title C for comedy. This set here, I'm gonna title D for drama. And then we draw a rectangle around it. And this is what we call the universal set U, which represents all of the information is within this rectangle here. Okay, when we go to populate the Venn diagram, it's very important to start at the middle and work our way out. And the reason for that is, if we started at the top, 11 tit comedy, and this is the comedy set here, a question that I would be asking myself is, is, well, where will I put the 11? If I put the 11 here, that represents people who like comedy, but not drama. See how it doesn't sit inside the drama set? So I'm not sure where to split up this 11. So a good rule of thumb is to always work from the inside and work your way out. So this last piece of information says here that eight ticked both. So I can confidently go ahead and place an eight in the intersection. And this here represents that out of the 20 that were surveyed, eight people ticked that they enjoyed watching both comedy and drama. So I've completed that piece of information. Let's now go back to the top, 11 ticked comedy. So inside of this total comedy set, the total number needs to add up to 11. Now I have already counted eight. So therefore the remaining people that tick comedy but didn't happen to tick drama is actually going to be three because three plus 11 is eight. Uh, sorry, three plus eight is 11, sorry. And that is the total number of people that happen to tick comedy. Okay, likewise for drama, I know that the total number of people inside of the drama set need to add up to 13. I have already counted eight that happen to also tick comedy, so therefore the remaining is going to be five. And these five people represent those who tick drama but didn't tick comedy. Now we're not quite finished yet because we know that to uh, in total 20 people were surveyed and so far we have counted three plus eight plus five, which is 16. So four people who were surveyed actually don't like watching either comedy or drama, and we put those somewhere outside the sets. I tend to like to put them on the bottom left. So four people here didn't tick either comedy or drama. Okay, so that's our completed Venn diagram here. I now wanna go through a couple of probability questions. I'll just do this down the bottom here. So in set notation, let's look at this first one. I wanna have little n and then a capital C, and this stands for the number of people that ticked comedy. So it isn't a probability question yet, it's just simply asking for the number. Now the number of people that tick comedy will be this three plus this eight, or in other words, all the people inside the comedy set, and that is equal to 11. 
Okay, the next one. The number of people that ticked both comedy and drama. And that will be equal to the number in the intersection here. And that's this eight here. So that will be eight. Let's now go into some probability questions now. So the difference here will be my, I have a capital P rather than a little n. So the probability of out of the 20 people, what is the probability of a randomly selected person uh, saying that they enjoy watching dramas? Well, the way to think about that is how many people are inside of the drama set, or in other words, how many people selected drama? That is this eight plus this five, that's 13 out of a total of 20 people. Okay, next one. The probability, and this is a little bit harder now, of randomly selecting someone who enjoyed watching drama, but not comedy. That's what this set notation here means. Drama and not comedy. This dash here means compliment, meaning not comedy. So that will equal, let's have a look at our Venn diagram here. I'm looking for the people who selected that they enjoy drama but not comedy, and that's this five here. So it will be five out of 20, and we can simplify that fraction. That will be one on four. Now the final one, this is about as hard as it gets for AISL, is a conditional probability question. So this is the probability of randomly selecting someone who chose drama that shows that they enjoyed watching drama, given, that's what this vertical line here means, that they also had liked um, drama. Sorry, I think I said drama before I meant comedy. So the probability of someone liking comedy, given that they like drama. Now the way to think about this is, I'll choose a different color here. Given drama means I'm now only interested in the people who say that they liked drama. I'm not interested in all 20. Now, of the people inside this red circle, how many people said that they also like comedy? Well, that will be this eight here. So therefore, my probability now is the eight who say they like comedy out of the total of people who say they like drama, which is 13, and that right there is my answer to my conditional probability question. Okay, that concludes our video on Venn diagrams. Just to recap, they are very useful to visualize information. So you might have a long list of information here and then you can create a three set Venn diagram. And if you do that correctly, you'll be in a much better position to then determine the relationships of the information and to then go ahead and calculate probabilities. Okay, I recommend practicing some of these questions in the probability section of the question bank.